Okay, probably people are familiar with Fibonacci function. You can look at and each value is just the previous two values added together. The first thing we're going to do is try to write code for Fibonacci. And I want us to use the one step method where I look at and I'm like, yo, Fibonacci of six should just be Fibonacci of five plus Fibonacci of four. And I can check from my little table at the bottom. Yeah, that should be right. Okay, so pause the video and try and write Fibonacci. And on this next slide, I've given you some uh, tests for bad inputs. I go back here and I'm like, yo, I'm going to want two base cases. The reason is Fibonacci of six depends upon two other Fibonacci calls. So it's like an N minus one call and an N minus two call. So I'm going to want two sort of backstops or base cases to have those hit. So I'll have if the input is zero, then I'll return zero. If the input is one, I'll return one. Otherwise, I'm going to add together a fib call of one minus the input and a fib call with two minus the input. I've got that code here. And you can see for even Fibonacci of six, I make a lot of recursive calls. Okay, I have an idea to use tail recursion. And so I want you to try and write this tail recursive function. And as a hint, I've written a tail recursive function and then run trace on it. So you can see fib helper, that's what I've called it. The first input goes from 10 and then subtracts one, subtracts one, subtracts one. Eventually I get to zero and I return my answer. So I'm making this a tail recursive version. So every call of fib makes a recursive call but doesn't have any additional calculations that it does after it makes that recursive call. So try and fill in these blanks as a brainstorming strategy and then check out, I have a little starter on the next slide. If you need a hint, play for one more slide. Okay, so here on this slide, I've got my hint, which are just some possible inputs. So you can take a look at those while you're writing your code. So if I'm planning my output, I can look at a base case is, you know, if that first input is a zero, I'm just gonna return the second input. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. That's gonna work as a base case for me, I think. And now let's look at how these values change each time. Okay, so I start with the second and third input being zero and one. It looks like for each one of these, I move my third input to be the new second input. Check it out, eight moves to be eight, which is the first input here, 21 to 21, 34, 34, 55, 55. So my new second input will just be the old third input. My new third input is just the sum of this previous second and third input. So one and one give me two, one and two give me three, five and eight give me 13. Let's look at that in code. So the new count or that new first input is just going to be subtracting one. The new second input or that new n1 value will just be the old n2 value. And then I'll add it together the second and third inputs or n1 and n2 to get the new n2 value or that new third input. And again, my base case is when count is equal to zero, I just return that second argument or that n1. So check it out. Are there any function calls that are waiting for the recursive call ret return? No. So that makes this tail recursion. See right here, it's just fib h. There's no other calculations that are waiting. If we compare this to this other version, it's not that much com more complicated, but this other version, look, look at how many function calls it made. And with our new tail recursive version, we only have to make n function calls for fib of 